Hi, this is Alex. I'm here today with our July 2024 Club Coffee, a fun pea berry coffee from Mexico. Check it out. So as a reminder, everyone, the Club Coffee is something we do here at Maple Leaf uh, to give folks a chance to try some different and exotic coffees from all around the world. Every once in a while, we'll do a couple of months where we do the same kind of coffee, a couple months in a row, different processing methods, different uh, varietal, uh, some fun stuff like that. And we generally try to choose a coffee that is off the normal path of things, something that we don't sell to our regular customers. And this month, I'm really excited because we actually have a pea berry coffee from Mexico. And I'm really looking forward to seeing which one uh, of these three that people choose. So if you're interested in this club coffee program, we always have some uh, spots available in our waiting list and uh, just shoot an email or a note or drop it in the store and we'll get you signed up for it as soon as possible. So uh, as I said, this month we have a pea berry coffee and the pea berry coffees are uh, kind of a uh, variety that we don't normally see in the normal course of the, the beans that we get. Uh, it is one of the coffees, uh, the beans that end up as kind of like the throwaway sometimes for a lot of roasters or for, for a lot of uh, farms. Uh, what happens when these pea berry beans are grown is that it's a uh, two chain, two beans normally grow in the same cherry, uh, but this is one where it ends up being the only bean within that cherry. So it kind of gets separated out from the rest of the crop and put into like separate bags to be sold. Uh, so the pea berry coffees generally tend to be very similar to their non pea berry counterparts, but they kind of tend to end up with like a little bit more of an earthy, richer, uh, almost sometimes spicy territory, not a hot spice, but like an herbal spice kind of territory. And uh, Mexican coffees as a general rule uh, kind of have like a creamy, mellow, uh, a little bit of like a citrusy tint to them. Uh, and so it's always fun to see those two things come together in a single coffee as we have with this month's uh, uh, club coffee. So uh, this month, this uh, coffee didn't roast terribly differently than how we normally do it. Um, the Mexican coffees are generally very easy, straightforward to roast, not a super big challenge in coffee to roast by any means. Uh, we didn't face any real particular issues with this one. The only change that I went through with this coffee compared to how I'd normally roast something is I tried to speed up the development process of this coffee a little bit to uh, highlight the flavor as opposed to the roasting process. So each of the three roasts has a shorter development time than what I would conventionally do with a coffee. So uh, hopefully that will be something that will enhance the overall flavor in a way that we might not normally see if I was doing this as one of my normal club coffee or just my normal coffees on the, on the shelf as well. So on the light roast side of things this month, uh, this is a coffee that I think is probably my favorite. Uh, has kind of a really strong kind of brown sugar, mild citrus, a little bit of a lime tint to it as well. I found this one to be really exotic, uh, something that is kind of a different change of pace from most Mexican coffees. Not that Mexican coffees for us aren't exotic and fun, but this one had some like tendencies to it that I thought were just off the normal path of a Mexican coffee for us. Uh, very caramely tone to it, a little bit of a cinnamon vibe, something that kind of reminded me a bit of both a coffee from Papua New Guinea for that caramel tone, and also something that was more of like a Guatemalan, almost Honduran flavor with that like citrusy cinnamon tone to it as well. Tiny bit of nuttiness, not a super strong nutty feel out of this guy, but you should get a little bit of it at the uh, outer edges and definitely not sharp. Uh, for a light roast, this is gonna be very mellow. I think if you are a person that has generally stayed away from light roast coffees because of the sometimes tart, sharp, acidic fail, uh, flavor, this is something that will be really fun and exotic without being um, difficult to drink and to digest for any sensitive stomach types out there. Uh, so this is my favorite this month. I think uh, definitely if you're on the edge, uh, go for the light roast this month. It's kind of the fun one to, to try. On the medium roast side of thing, this is where we fit more into the conventional Mexican profile. Uh, it has that kind of creamy, citrusy, uh, easy stomach kind of feel to it. Um, the big variation with this coffee versus uh, some of the conventional Mexican coffees that we've had is we do get a little bit of that chocolatey flavor that we don't normally see out of the Mexican coffees, kind of like a cocoa powder sort of feel. So it's not a super strong uh, chocolate sort of vibe, but it is definitely there. Uh, very smooth, um, very easy to drink, a little bit of a citrus, mild honey sort of flavor. So that honey tendency that we saw in the light roast that is similar to the Honduran or Guatemalan coffees is still here on the medium roast side, but it's a lot more evened out. Um, so I think if there's something that you're normally going for uh, in any of the club coffees and you normally go with a medium, if you want something a little bit more robust, a little more flavorful, 
uh, definitely go with the light roast this month. Uh, medium roast is just fine, it's good, but the way that I roast most Mexican coffees is as a medium roast for uh, the general uh, public in the shelf here. So I don't think this one really does it for me the same way that the uh, two different options and the light and the dark roast side of things do as well. On the dark roast side of things, this is where we pick up our usual roasty feel, the conventionally kind of uh, smoky, uh, a little bit uh, heavier feel for, for the dark roast coffees. Uh, the fun part about this one, uh, many Mexican coffee generally, generally will, will drink a little bit easier, more mellow, more creamy on the stomach. So it's not the biggest bodied Mexican uh, coffee that we've had. It's also not the lightest, and it's also uh, Mexican coffees will generally not be all that weighty to begin with in terms of the way that they drink. But as a dark roast, it does take on some exotic tendencies that you don't normally see out of a dark roast either. So you get that richness of flavor that you see out of a dark roast, but you still get some of those remnants of the cinnamon lime kind of feel to it as well. So there's a, a fun variation in this coffee that uh, dark roasts generally uh, don't have a super ton of substance to them. But as I mentioned up top, because of the uh, quickness of the progression of the development of this coffee, uh, it did retain a lot of the flavor. I did my best to kind of keep um, most of the Mexican flavor intact. So you get those kind of normal cherry, mild spice, dark chocolate tones that you get out of a darker roast coffee sometimes. Um, but you still get a little bit of that kind of cocoa powder and honey sort of feel to it that I think is sort of a fun, sweet, uplifting flavor that will sit really well for the dark roast uh, sort of drinkers out there too. So I think there's really something really exotic and interesting in both the light and the dark roast this month. If you were normally a medium roast person, try to skew towards the light. If you're normally a dark roast person and you want to step outside your comfort zone, maybe the light would be the best way to go as well. But there's something really fun about the dark roast too because of that substance and character that's still present in this coffee. So I'm really excited for folks to give this one a shot this month and look forward to seeing you next month for another great club coffee. Catch you soon.